Hey, watch lovers. Brad from Brent Miller Jewelers back again with you today. Today we're going to start another series of the uh, five round kind of putting up manufacturers against each other. And uh, for the next five rounds or the next little quote unquote mini series we do once a week here, uh, we're going to go Tudor versus Breitling. Uh, I certainly have plenty of dive watches, but I'm going to start off uh, round one here with two integrated cases, or I, I should say very, uh, at least the appearance of an integrated case here. You do have a traditional kind of lug width on the uh, the chronomat, but um, again, no GMT functionality on the Royal, but I thought aesthetically, two blue dials, um, again, integrated case uh, appearance. Uh, so this is how we're going to kick off round one of Tudor versus Breitling. Uh, this Royal was a 38 millimeter. The Chronomat GMT here is a 40 millimeter. So the specs on this, 38.2 is what I measured above the crown, diagonally across the case, and even 38 millimeters across this fixed notched bezel. And then 31.2 from three to nine on the Sapphire Crystal. Compared to the Breitling, 41 millimeters. And again, that's a little bit larger because I had to measure above the crown protector. So up a little bit higher than I normally would here, right against the crown. So up here, diagonally across 41 that direction, um, but 39.8 across the bezel there. So about 40 uh, as, uh, as listed. And then 31.5 on the crystal. So uh, just slightly larger crystal on the chronomat compared to the, uh, the Royal. 10.6 millimeters thin on the Royal versus 11.9. So a little over a millimeter thicker on the uh, on the Breitling. But again, with the GMT functionality, that's probably to be expected. 44.9 lug tip to lug tip. And again, with the integrated case there, you can see it's, it's pretty compact. Again, 44.9 compared to 47.3 on the chronomat. And again, that's a true measurement that drops straight down. So a little bit, uh, again, a little bit larger watch, a little bit longer lug to lug as expected. And then as far as the bracelets go, the Royal is uh, essentially 24 millimeters. I think I measured like 23.8. So I'm going to round up 24 across the uh, the top of that. A quote unquote lug width, uh, really obviously not a lug there. And that tapers down to 16. We do have a fold over style, um, just a regular deployment clasp with a small flip lock there, our locking mechanism. You can see sign tutor. We do have no micro adjustability on this watch. Uh, let's take a look. I didn't even look to see if we have half links. Don't see half links. You do have links removable by screws. Solid stainless steel case back. We do have a signed screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, and I weighed it at 135.1 grams. Let me give you a look at that dial. You have a sunburst blue dial, your Roman uh, hour markers there in a white date window, date wheel at three o'clock. And on the Breitling, and I should have mentioned too, we are uh, underneath that stainless steel case back, housing the T601 movement, 38 hours of power reserve. Um, so uh, again, essentially, uh, again, without seeing it, a modified Salita movement at this point. Uh, and your Breitling, um, 20 millimeter lug width. However, I did measure that widest one at 24. So essentially the same width at the widest point on those integrated style bracelets. Uh, that 20 millimeter lug width there tapers to 18. Uh, and we do have a butterfly style clasps on the Breitling. Dual push button release on both. Solid stainless steel case back. Housing that underneath there is the Caliber B32, 42 hour power reserve. So again, um, modified movements, 38 versus 42. So very similar um, type of movements. Obviously you get the GMT functionality uh, with the Breitling. Signed, screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance. So an extra 100 meters of water resistance and this weighed in at 153.8. So a little bit larger watch. Uh, what is that? Not quite 20 grams heavier. Um, Fixed bezel, you do have a rotating bezel on the Breitling. Pretty good action. Again, sunburst effect on that blue dial. Date window color matched at the six o'clock position. And then let's talk about pricing uh, again. So the Tudor retail at 25, 25, $2,525. 
versus your Breitling at $5,950. So not quite $6,000 versus about $2,500. Um, and so that is going to be round one. Hopefully I give you all the specs. Uh, if you're still here, I will give you quick wrist shots of both. I will say both fit my six and three quarter inch wrist fairly well. So the Tudor first. And as I'm doing this, uh, trying these on, if there is a Breitling Tudor comparison that you really want to see, uh, put that in comments. Put that in the comments as well as uh, which of these models you would choose with your own money. Um, as I uh, as inventory allows, I'll try, I'll try to do my best to, to give you guys what you want. Um, but again, I know we got some divers coming up. Try to get some chronographs, uh, Navitimer and the Black Bay Chrono, um, and we'll uh, we'll run these through uh, a best of five like we did with the uh, the Grand Seiko and Omega, as well as the Tudor and Omega from uh, previous weeks. So let me hit the lights real quick for you. As always, if there's anything I can do for you, anything at all, shoot me an email, brad at brentlmiller.com. Always happy to help out. To the Royal, you can see we got some loom on the hands and the chronomat. We got the hour markers, the hands, and the loom pip here on the bezel. So thanks for viewing. Let me know who is taking round one for you. Is it the Royal or is it the chronomat? We'll see you in the next video.